Hello everyone. I would like to make a short video about what is monogenic diabetes. Many people do not know about monogenic diabetes. People know about type 2 diabetes, which is the commonest type of diabetes which occurs in adults. A lot of people also know about type 1 diabetes, which occurs in children. And if you have type 1 diabetes, you have to take lifelong insulin throughout your life. The child or young adult has to take the insulin three or four times a day for the rest of their life. But apart from these, there are other forms of diabetes called as monogenic diabetes. That's what I'm going to briefly talk about today. As the name itself implies, monogenic means a single gene is involved. In our body, there are thousands of genes, but there are also genes which control the pancreatic insulin secretion. If one of those genes is affected or mutated from birth, then you can get these monogenic forms of diabetes. Now, some of these monogenic forms of diabetes are mistaken as type 1 diabetes and the child will be asked to take insulin injection throughout life. If you are able to correctly suspect and diagnose monogenic diabetes by doing genetic testing, then some of these children can stop the insulin and be converted to tablets. And that's the importance of monogenic diabetes. We have just set up a center for monogenic diabetes at Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Special Center and the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation at Gopalapuram in Chennai. Our research center is also shown here. In Siruseri, you can see the big sprawling campus that we have uh, at our Siruseri. And that's our Gopalapuram center. And in both these places, the center for monogenic diabetes uh, has been set up. Uh, it's been uh, just inaugurated uh, by the Honorable Health Minister of Tamil Nadu, uh, Thiru Ma Subramani. So let's go to the subject of monogenic diabetes. Monogenic diabetes refers to a group of disorders where the diabetes is caused by a defect in a single gene. As I said, mono is one and genic is gene. About 2 to 5 percent of all the diabetes cases in the pediatric and young age group. Uh, is caused by monogenic diabetes. And the importance of this is if you are able to do the genetic test and identify it, the treatment for that child or the young adult can change. Specifically, I'd like to talk about four types of monogenic diabetes. In fact, three of them are diabetes and the other is a low uh, sugar or hypoglycemia. These three types are the commonest is maturity onset diabetes in the young or MODI. Then there is something called as neonatal diabetes, which is diabetes which occurs in the first six months of age. There are certain syndromic forms of neonatal diabetes, where apart from the diabetes, you also have liver problem or kidney problem or something else, uh, which is called a syndromic form of diabetes. This also can be diagnosed by doing genetic tests. And the last one is not diabetes, but the opposite, low sugars. So we have hypoglycemia, congenital hyperinsulinemia with hypoglycemia or low sugars. This can also be diagnosed by doing a genetic test. Very briefly, I'll tell you about these. Now, uh, these are the places in India from where we get samples for doing the genetic test. Uh, many years ago, the Indian Council of Medical Research recognized our center, the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation, as a center uh, for doing this kind of work. Now we get samples, as you can see, from virtually every part of the country. Uh, we get blood samples from these children or young adults and we are able to uh, diagnose whether they have uh, one of these monogenic forms of diabetes and give them the proper treatment. How do we do this? We do it by a genetic test. This is equipment that we use. It's called a Sanger sequencing. And this is done at the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation. The numbers are not small. We have close to 1,500 or 1,500 people who have been referred to us uh, for this testing. Uh, Modi itself is almost a 1,000. Neonatal diabetes is 274, monogenic syndromes is 51, and this hypoglycemia is 152. So close to 1,500 such uh, samples we have received and done the testing for. Now, why should we bother about this? Now, here is uh, uh, seven children uh, where you can see where they had mutations in either the ABCC8 gene or the KCNJ11 gene. Now, before the genetic testing was done, they had very high blood sugars. You can see HbA1c is 16, 10, 11, etc. And the blood sugar, you can see 460, 300 and so on. After we did this genetic test, we stopped the insulin and changed these children over to a very uh, commonly used tablet, a sulfonylurea. 
And after that, you can see a dramatic drop in the HbA1c. The sugars have all gotten the control now. You can see the fasting blood sugars come from 460 to 120, from 300 to 105. So complete control has been achieved because that genetic defect that the child had has been set right by taking the sulfonylurea tablet. Now, we have not stopped with that. We have continued to follow these children. The dotted line shows when the child came to us for the treatment. And you can see some of the blood sugars so high, 1,200, 800, uh, 400, and so on. These are all different, different children. And these are mutations that we found. And after stopping the insulin and changing the child to tablet, you can see a dramatic reduction in the blood sugar level. Now the blood sugars are almost 100, 150 in the normal range. And one year, two years, three years, four years after these children came to us, they still continue to have normal blood sugars. As far as these children are concerned, it's almost like a miracle that they're able to stop insulin. And in fact, we better control with the tablets. Now, this is an opposite situation. I told you about this condition called congenital hypoglycemia. You can see the blood sugars here, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So these children underwent the genetic testing. Then we found out that they had congenital hyperinsulinemia. Then we gave them a tablet called as disoxide. And after treating the child with that, you can see the blood sugars have come back to normal. In almost all the children, it's come back to normal. And again, it's kept for one year, two years, three years, four years down the line. The children are still very well controlled. Now, to uh, spread awareness about this, we already started what is called as the neonatal and monogenic diabetes registry of India. If you Google www.monogenicdiabetes.in, you will get the details. And this explains how the blood should be taken, about the informed consent, how to contact us, the telephone numbers as to how to contact us. So any one of you uh, in India who is watching this particular program, if you know of a child who has been diagnosed before one year of age, or if you think that a child may not have type 1 diabetes and you like a second opinion or something, uh, please refer them uh, to us. At the end of this video, I'll give you some uh, email IDs and cell phone numbers, and please feel free to contact us. If you can help such children, it would be great. Now, the significance of our work is that the genetic diagnosis helps in correcting uh, the treatment, in the correct diagnosis, and to plan the management of monogenic diabetes. We've been able to, uh, it's very gratifying that we've been able to help hundreds of such children, uh, very often from even from very poor socioeconomic status, where we have helped them out uh, uh, by doing free genetic testing as well. Uh, and of course, those who can afford, then they, they pay for the services. But uh, we would be very happy. Uh, to reach out to everybody in India. So spread this message, share this video. And if you know any child who has type 1 diabetes, please uh, pass on, or any child with diabetes for that matter, please uh, pass on this information to them and share with them this video as well as our contact details. And we would be happy uh, to get back to them and try to help them. And with that, I'd like to thank you uh, for listening to this video. Thank you very much.